Hey dudes and dudettes, my name's Dan and welcome back to The Forge in this episode of Trust Me I'm a Blacksmith. Let's punch a three quarter inch hole in a three quarter inch piece of bar. So this is going to be kind of a how to video or as opposed to a how to make but you know they're sort of all the same. And basically what I have is a job where I need a 20 mil hole in the end of this 20 mil square bar. Uh, and then I need a 20 mil pin to stick out of it. Now I need it to look nice and tidy, uh, and to do that is um, is a little bit of a task, especially considering that 20 mil bar and a 20 mil hole in it is uh, a little bit counterintuitive. Now I was told as an apprentice, uh, not as an apprentice, I was told as a student that putting a 20 mil hole in a 20 mil bar or a three quarter inch hole in a three quarter inch bar um, is a job that only a blacksmith can do. An engineer can't do this job. An engineer couldn't take a piece of square bar and just put a hole straight through it that was the same size as the bar stock itself. Um, and it's, it's something that takes some practice and it's unique to blacksmithing. Uh, and if you get it right, it looks really tidy. It looks really good, uh, but things can go wrong. In order to punch the hole, um, you are gonna need a slitting punch. Now I'm gonna, for this uh, particular uh, task I'm going to use this slitting punch. Uh, I've made this so I can use it firstly under the power hammer and secondly as part of a list of other tools that I have that I hold in a pair of tongs. Now I like working this way, this is my personal choice. You don't have to do this. Um, you get a nice large surface area to make contact with um, and uh, these tools tend to be fairly robust. You could always use a normal punch. Now, both these tools I've made out of scrap spring steel. Both of these tools have come from he the heavier kind of vehicles. This is made out of train spring, and this is made out of lorry or truck spring. Now, the starting diameter for both of these was well over 30 mil stock, right? Um, so um, I've used the power hammer mostly to make these, but you can do it by hand if you want to. If you want to make tools like this, all of these tools here except from this, they're all made out of spring steel. Find good quality spring steel um, from your scrapyard uh, and try and find, uh, locate if you can, the heavier stuff, stuff from trains and lorries. Car springs are okay, they tend not to be the best quality. So the slitting punch I'm using is this one here and the way I made it was basically I forged this to 16 mil round because these are 16 mil drifts and then I flattened it down into a taper and made sure that one, one profile of this punch is 16 mil. Um, I'll put the American down here somewhere. Uh, okay, so as a consequence, that gives me a cross section that will put a nice slit in there that will um, that will give me an, a good a good dimension for drifting out to 16 mil round. Now, as a process, you don't need to use. I well, I personally don't think you need to use spring steels for drifts. Um, but I, I have in this instance, and the reason I've done it is because um, this one can be going through, it can come out, it can get chucked on the floor, it can cool down slowly, and then this one can go through. Um, you can't really quench drifts when they're made out of harder steels. Uh, that can cause you some problems, and I don't want any problems, um, so I've made two. And then the final drift is um, just a, well, it's bright bar actually, but it's a bit of um, it's a bit of 20 mil round bright bar, mild steely stuff. Uh, and I'm not going to make this out of a harder steel. This will work fine. Uh, it's only got to do a little bit of work. Um, but yes, I've made I've made more than one, and I'm going to make some more for the job that I actually have to do with not this not particular job, but a job that I've got coming up for some railings. I'll probably make about 10 of these little bad boys. That way, they stay cool. I can use them repetitively. You know, it just makes life easier. So you'll need your punch, your assortment of drifts, and to back the hole up, you're gonna need a bolster plate. Um, the purpose of a bolster plate is once you're, you've, punt, you've drifted your hole on the anvil, you've gone all the way through, you put your drift in, and this just stops the hole from collapsing in on itself by using this bolster plate just to give you a bit of support whilst you're drifting over the hardy hole. Now, oh, that was a bit tight, this is an old, this is an old um, this is a, this is an old uh, bolster plate and it's getting a bit tatty. I need to make a new one. Uh, now these are 16 mils. That's a 16 mil hole. 
Uh, this is 20 mil. That's going to cause me a problem. But um, I'll show you how to get over that when we're doing the pump. Okay, so the first job to do is to mark up so that we can find our centre really easily when it comes out of fire really hot. And um, all I'm going to do, I'm just going to place a little tap and just get this lined up and make sure that it's kind of central. Now, this is the time where you want to be moving. You want to move the stock so that you can take advantage of it when it's nice and hot and hit it nice and hard. Now, I've got that looking fairly central, I feel. Um, okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you. If I want to line this up, I'm going to hold this this way. Let me try and do is show you. If I want to line this up, I can look down. So I, if I say this was flat on the anvil like this, I'm looking at it here like this. I'm looking at the centre of that and how it sits in in relation to the bar. So I'm going to place that on there and make sure it looks central. Okay. And with this slightly colder temperature, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to bring these corners off now. This does two things. This means I'm going to be less likely to burn the bar. And it also gives the edge of the forged hole, the punched hole, a really nice finish. This bar's a bit cold really now, um, but it doesn't matter, I'm just taking the corners off. As long as the corners look even. And you want to take off about Which is a nicer quality, I feel, than just hitting a bit of bar you pull off the shelf. Now I'm going to put that back in the fire. Okay, so I've got the bar nice and hot. Keeping it off the anvil so the heat isn't soaked out of it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Like so. Now, you can you pick your tongs up and flip her back over, or uh, you can do a bit of practice and flip her over with your hammer and your punch. Now, I'm going to look and try and find the centre. Oh, I think it's about there. No, maybe not. Okay, there it is. Okay. Now, I'm just going to shear this slug right off. Like so. So that's the end of the tool. It's still looking pretty happy to me. And, um, oh, it's not sheared the slug off quite. It's nearly has. Nearly has. Okay. So, this is another reason that it's good to use slightly higher carbon tool steels for tooling uh, because. There's our slug. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to look at that in a minute. Uh, because you can work in the colder ranges and the advantages that that gives you uh, means it will speed you up your work, your work output. Now I was hitting that pretty hard and I got a little bit of drag through. Now I'll show you what I mean by drag through. This here, this, this slight pull down here, I don't know if you can see it on the camera. This slight pull down here that's drag through. Now if you take the corners off, it looks a bit less. I'm sure it's a bit worse than what it actually is. But um, we'll carry on regardless. Another element of hole punching or fire welding or any blacksmithing process is being prepared. I've got all the tools I'm gonna need laid out and I know where they are. So I'm gonna grab this bar now. 
and I need this bar as hot as possible. The hotter this is, the better results I'll get. Now I'm a little bit to the left on this, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet. I'm going to um, a little bit to the left on this one. I'm not going to quite worry about it just as yet. Now, first thing I'm going to do. Now that little ting, was it hitting the bolster plate? I'll just turn this over and put that through that way. And then what I think I'm going to do now is I'm just going to straighten this up a little bit. Oh, grab this punch. Is that so is it? Yeah, it's this one. I'm going to just send this through the opposite way. Like so. Now, as you can see, this side here this side here is moved ever so slightly more than that side. And that's because my hole was slightly off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this from getting as hot as this side. So this next heat, I'm going to place this in the fire with this part facing up, with this part facing out of the fire. And then when I come to forge it, I'm going to pour some water on it so it can't move anywhere, make sure it's nice and cold, and hopefully this is going to forge over. Okay, so I've heated the bar so one side's hotter than the other, and all I'm going to do now You can see that it's moved that over ever so slightly, which is what we want. So just one more of those and we should be in, in business. As you can see, nice central hole. Not much draw through, a little bit on this side, but um, I'm going to show you a cheeky trick to get rid of that in a second. A little bit of draw through, which is, you know, is, it, is expected in this situation, but that's okay. And um, looking nice and round and even and central. So, next job, take it out to 20 round. I've got a little bit of a bolster plate here. It's a Basically a bit of 30 square with a basically a bit of 30 square with a 20 mil hole punched in it. Just gonna take this drift now. Just gonna go about halfway through. Knock her out. Straighten her up and heat her back up again. Opposite side this time. Just gonna grab this. Drop that in there. Right. Now that I've got the bar free, I'm just going to start. Four 
punching down those sides. Ever so slightly. The last little job I like to do is um, just take a round punch and just um, just round everything back up again. Uh, round drift even. Um, if I'm doing a hole that I think people are going to see. I do it as a matter of course. But um if I'm not then uh if no one's going to see it, then I don't tend to bother doing it. Especially if it's going to be riveted closed. It doesn't matter as long as it looks right. So there you are. One 20mm hole in 20mm square stock. And not much draw back, air draw through. And not too much draw down. There's a little bit, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's to be expected if you haven't upset the stock ready. But it's fairly round. It's got an even wall size-ish. It's fairly central, so it's an okay job. Right, let's move on to the real job. So I just wanted to look and see how the bars would look if I didn't bother upsetting them. Uh, and I punched this hole just now, and it's gone through really tidy. I'm really happy with it, so I'm not going to bother upsetting them. And I'm just going to video me now. Um, uh, I'm just going to video me now doing the uh, next one, um, and probably only cutting out the um, the the, um, the heating parts. So let's get on. So uh, a little bit of a talky video, also uh, a lot of information in there, I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, we got some good results with the hole punches uh, and I managed to make these two pickly pieces. These are going to be holding up a door, a very important door. If you want to find out more about that door you'll have to check out the vlog that's going to come up in a couple of days. Um, 
been doing some work for a museum and it's a piece for a museum so uh, it's a, quite an interesting piece blacksmithing wise uh, that's what that's all about and I'm just gonna keep this short because there's a lot of chatting in the rest of the video so I hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you did remember to leave a like um, if you enjoyed it enough why don't you subscribe if you haven't already and if you are a subscriber remember to ring that bell for notifications uh, that will tell you every time I make a video uh, go over to my channel, check out all the other videos that are there, there's other how to makes, there's challenges of me making the anchor, there's, well basically there's a bit, there's a bit about blacksmithing for everyone, or just general day to day life running a workshop, um, some welding, fabricating, some forging and all that sort of stuff, um, and chuck some comments down below, um, a little bit style different this time, it wasn't really a how to make, it was more of a how to video, uh, if you enjoyed it, let me know if you thought it was a bit uh, let me know just let me know what you thought that'd be really nice also there's loads of you guys who are real regular leaving those comments so just check your comments up like normal I'm gonna get on with some more work now but I will leave you with a video here of a vlog that I posted recently the the newest hammer time and I will chuck down here a video of me doing some heat treating see you guys later bye bye well, go on Oh, and if you got the chance, check out the Patreon. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.